want to say from the bottom of my heart for all of you that have served or have family that is serving still. Thank you. God bless every one of you. I want to uh, stand with us this morning and uh, we want to do pledge allegiance to the flags, both flags and the flag this morning. We have some uh, hymns interspersed with those and so just uh, join with us in praise the Lord and give honor to our veterans and just remember where this country comes from. It didn't just happen. It was because of God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice.
Let us pray. As we enter the throne room in the name of Jesus, we think today about soldiers. We think about sometimes we look at the youth of those who go. People go at all ages, but when you look at the bulk of the wars, it was our youth that went to battle. And many things happen there. Things they live with their entire lifetime. But yet they grow and come back men and women having been trained in many arts and in many things we wish they would have never been trained in. <coughs> and at home, the home front is too. We never have a loved one away especially in danger or unreachable that we don't have a burden in all. Sometimes it was a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a, a wife or a husband. All the different roles of people they gave, but it was the soldier who went. And we think of the same thing, Lord, in your kingdom. You have many soldiers of all ages that have trod many, many miles to keep this kingdom going just like the soldier does the country. And today we just say thank you. We pray protection upon those who are serving right now. We pray for protection upon their families and their homes. And then we just simply want to say how proud we are of them. They always make our hearts sore when we see them and, and understand both the, the, the physical soldier and the soldier of the kingdom. It's all done through you and what you can do, Lord, when people put themselves in your hands. When countries put themselves in your hands, other countries fall because of the power that you put in the one who trusts in you. Today, we just ask that you would receive our thanks for what you have done and are doing and will do to keep those who need to be serving, serving. Thank you for the strength, the protection, for being with them, those who gave their all, those who came back wounded, for those who struggle each day with the battles inside. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. And together we all bring this to you and we all say, Amen.
Brother Mike uh, does the announcements. Would those who have served in our armed forces, would you please stand? God says he's got something planned for us and we just say praise the Lord. Then Wednesday uh, it will be jam and then the 19th they're having their five dollar lunch fundraisers again and uh, they've been very good with that. I do want to say thank you to the ladies and whoever came and worked yesterday. I know there was some yesterday that came and cleaned and took stuff to the landfill and did other things. Thank and worked very hard. I want to thank you very, very much for that. Yard sale and, and bazaar raised seventeen hundred and twenty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents. That's going to go to church extension to help struggling churches or to build new churches, and, and we just praise the Lord for that all that hard work. And I know with every one of those dollars that came in, there also went out word about God and the witness. So just praise the Lord for that. Then you see on the 21st, oh, I don't forget, I didn't put that on up there. Uh, next Saturday morning, the Men's Fellowship will have a breakfast, and then we'll come together and do a little bit of, of uh, I guess, pre-decoration for the getting ready for the hanging of the greens. We want to get the big wreath hung up here. And we want to do that by the pastor's mind here because we don't want her to have an episode of PTSD. I think she's being hung again, so... We'll take care of that next Saturday. And then on the 21st, we'll have a community service in the morning. And then the hanging of the greens that evening. And then we'll just uh, continue to work together. <coughs> Holiday dinner coming up very quickly. And season's upon us. I'm not going to tell you how many days it left because my wife will get mad at me. <laughs> Do we have any birthdays this week? Or anniversary? I see a hand up back there. That's anniversary. Okay. All right, we're gonna sing it.
as they're coming. Uh, this is bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing upon us. Heavenly Father, we just come humbly before you and we want to say thank you for all those willing hearts that serve in our military, but also those that serve in your army. Those that so willingly <coughs> witness, evangelize, fundraise, do whatever it is that it takes to further your kingdom. But Father, we pray that each and every one of us will do our part this morning, and it will humbly give what it is you put on our hearts to give. And Father, we just want to thank you ahead of time for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
probably know where that one came from. Dwight D. Eisenhower. And I got the name Wilma Lee. And I inquired of that one time, and I heard a humorous story, but it ended with this. She had a younger brother that was overseas in the war. When I was born, she didn't know if he'd come home. So she took his name, William Lee, and named me Wilma Lee. So when I came into the world, I had an uncle working, picking up bodies and trying to get them, I need to get them home to their families. That's a quite a heritage, isn't it? And another lifelong friend that was wounded the day I was born that spent months and years in hospitals learning to walk again and lived his entire life. But he was fighting for freedom the day I came into this world. America has a great heritage. The day we dedicated Bivens Chapel Church and moved across the road, old church on one side, new church on the other, someone brought a very, very shiny, nice vehicle truck and we loaded two veterans on there and two veterans of the cross. And they took the flags and the Bibles and went in front of us and we all marched behind them to go to the new quarters. Don't you wish we could somehow get America's attention once again to be the kind of country that causes you to swallow when you think about some great things that have happened? I think we, we can live those lives ourselves, can't we? Let us pray. In your name again, Jesus, we, we enter the room where you, Father God, are, where the angels are, the book of life, the books of the Bible, where all power in heaven and in earth, from alpha to omega, from beginning to end, that place, Lord, where the last battle that will be fought, we, your people, will be the winning side. Amen. We are looking forward to that day when we march in the most victorious march that has ever been made. And we, the people of Jesus Christ, will enter that land to celebrate forever being a winning nation, a winning kingdom, and a winning people forever. And we do this because of what you did, Father God, in giving your son, what you did, Jesus, in giving your life, and you, Holy Spirit, for always reminding us to stay with the other two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Richie and family too for coming and helped me sort the mine. When we started jam, we needed some kids. <laughs> uh, we had to salt the mine to get it started. So I asked several families to help me do that, and uh, you all have, and I, I really appreciate that. And we've even had some battles keeping it going lately, and I, here we have COVID now, but we've, we've had the our kids have a battle just being sick. So it, it seems like we've, uh, but we've had the battle to keep going, but at the same time, we're making some progress. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we're, we're appreciative of that. And we've, we've got some things, bring a bulletin out there. Would you please get in the habit of giving a bulletin? The dates and so forth that are in there, um, you can kind of get in your mind and think about what's coming the next weekend. This evening, Kelsey does still plan to be with us, and I know you're going to be happy to know that if she doesn't sing the whole concert, you will probably still get to hear some from me. I know that you'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> I, I knew you would you know, be good about that. Um, I, but tonight, uh, Kelsey is still planning to come. Michael had something happen, but it seems like we're, we're living in that kind of time, aren't we? We can't predict all this sickness, etc. cetera. Um, I, I've had some things happen this week, too, that, that uh, had to be dealt with. And um, I, too, have a, have a friend that's 90 that I don't know is a Christian. That is is in need of prayer because they are critical. Mm -hmm. And um, so remember that. Today my, my thought goes really along with the last song, of course both songs she sang is great, but the last song especially about just hanging on. But my thought today is about the, the, the formula that the Lord has given us for times like these. I want to go to Matthew, the 11th chapter. And the Lord spoke about the times when you're laboring, when you're really laboring, when you feel like you're burdened. You know, there are times in life, as you well know, personally, there are times in families, there's times on jobs. There's times in churches. There's times in the land when we feel like we are just laboring. And we feel like we're just burdened. And it feels like it's just not going away. I know that everybody has times that, that you just think, I don't know if this season is ever going to stop. It seems like I've just been... I've never watched that movie, but I know the essence of that movie about Groundhog Day was that he got up every day and he had the same day over again. And sometimes we feel that way spiritually. Sometimes we feel that way in our lives. Uh, it's like there's a burden and it it's just won't move. Uh, that we are laboring and laboring and laboring and we come in tired and even at times we come in soul tired. Now that's when you're really starting to get into a problem. Tired in the body. You know, I have been known to lay down in my bed and say, thank you, Lord, for good mattresses. <laughs> because I, I was that glad to get to the bed. Especially when I have a day that starts out early and goes all the way to 11 or 12 o'clock. And by the time I hit that bed, I'm thinking, wow, seedily apostrophated, glad you're here. <laughs> uh, you know, that's one kind of tired. But you all know what it's like to be soul tired. <clears throat> Pardon me. When, you're, when it feels like you have been praying and you feel like you have been... Uh, you've done everything you know to do. I mean, you've really been speaking the right thing. You've been trying to actually live the right thing. You've been doing everything you know to do, and 
the, the thing just isn't moving. And the Lord spoke kind of to these times. <clears throat> In Matthew 11, starting at verse 27, he first of all stated his right to speak to us on this occasion. He said, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So he, he makes some pretty powerful statements there. Yeah. I know the Father. The Father knows me, and we can reveal ourselves to people. And then he said, come unto me. Come unto me. That's always the answer. Come unto me, who? All ye that labor and are heavy laden. If you just feel like you're laboring, 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 you're heavy laden, maybe you're battling, it could be anything. We'll talk about that in a moment. And he said, I'll give you rest. Just rest, okay? Then he goes back and he says, but if you'll take my yoke upon you, you'll actually enter into a relationship where I'm in one side of the yoke and you're in the other side of the yoke. And if you'll learn of me, you'll find that I am meek and lowly of heart and you will find rest unto your souls. So he said, you can come to me and just bring me those burdens and, and lay them down. Or you can come to me and say, would, would you accept me to enter into a yoke relationship with you? Yeah. Now in our days, I've never seen yoke worked. I know what it means, um, but mostly, most of my life, the only thing I saw worked was horses or mules. I've never seen the oxen yoked together. I know it exists, and I know it was a thing much before my time, uh, but in my day, and I was not very old when even the horses and the mules left the fields, and the tractors came. But I do remember the mules and the horses being in the fields. Uh, but I don't remember the oxen. And he said, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Yeah. Now let's go on over to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. And, he, and this talks about some of the things, some of the things that might be your problem. Uh, that, that, that could happen to us in our lifetime. In chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, We then, as workers together with him, okay, now, you and me, if we're working with him. All right, so we, we have entered that yoke relationship. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. So don't let the grace, you have grace, you have unmerited favor in heaven. Don't let that be in vain. Understand you have grace. You have unmerited favor in heaven. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. I'm hearing you. If you've been up in the middle of the night uh, and even walked to the bathroom in your house shoes and was walking down the hall saying, Lord, I don't know how much more I can take of this. Lord, if you don't help me pretty soon, you know, if you've been in that kind of a place, he said, I'm hearing you. I'm listening. I'm hearing you. And in the day of salvation have I secured me. I'm taking care of you. I'm helping you. Behold. He said, now, but you need to listen to something. You need to hear me about something. Behold. Now is the accepted time. We're we'll talking more about that. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So he said, I'm hearing you, but I need you to behold and understand now is the time. He said, giving no offense in anything, 
that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Now here's some of the things that could happen. In much patience. You ever had something you needed a lot of patience for? That you had to count as you went through the room. Oh, one, two, three. <laughs> now if you haven't been there, come up and live with us a while. Uh, in much patience. It could be afflictions. It could be necessities. You know, sometimes you have problems just about necessities. You know, the dishwasher broke. Well, that wasn't really a big deal until the washer overflowed into that room and tore up the towel in that room. And that wasn't really such a big deal until you had two flat tires that week. And that really wasn't so big until you got sick to boot. In necessities. How am I even going to get the everyday stuff? <laughs> I see you're all with me. You know, he said, there's times that, that this, this laboring and this heavy laden is just about trying to keep things done that are necessities. And he said, in distresses, sometimes things distress you. In stripes, in imprisonments, of course this was Paul, in tumults, I've often said, what if, isn't it going to be something to put a foot over into heaven and there is no more confusion? I'd give all of the people jobs to the Lord and just enter the land as this is number 6,203 or 48,003,000, whatever it is. Uh, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Listen to what all he said you could have trouble with. In pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness. You ever been kind to somebody that kicked you in the rear? By the Holy Ghost unfeed. By the Holy Ghost leading to you and it's not prejudiced in any way and asking you to love people no matter what. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report. Have you ever had uh, just gotten stressed out because you got a, a you, you were treated with honor? Well, that was easy to take. And somebody came right along behind with dishonor. And you had to take that too and go through it. Then somebody came along and said, I can give you a good report about Wilma. And somebody else said, well, I can give you an evil report about Wilma. And you have to live through it all. You know, it's good when somebody uh, says, oh, this is good. This is the, how good this was. But somebody else is saying, look how bad this was. I, I've often said, if you could ever get people to quit talking about the worst things in their life, Oh, that you would shut up about that. <laughs> I'm thinking the, the old Mr. Gail Gordon. Do you remember his voice there? Remember how he used to talk that way? Oh, that you would just stop that. <laughs> oh, that you would just hush talking about the worst things. Now, for those of you younger ones, you, you won't get it. But Gail Gordon was a, he was a guy that, uh, he, he would be playing the principal or the boss or whatever most of the time, and he would talk in a normal voice, but then when he wanted them to do something, he always put into that voice. If we would stop talking about the worst things that ever happened in our life and talk about Jesus and talk about the good things, but man, do we ever like to wobble in the mud. But he said, sometimes it's a good report, sometimes it's bad. I'm thinking of a time, there was an elder in our church when I was a girl. Our top elders died within three weeks of each other when I was a girl. I was maybe 11, 12. And Bivens Chapel was rich. In, in good leadership. And one elder 
was found with cancer and died within just a week, just days, a week. And the other elder was hit in an automobile accident and killed. And I had lived my entire life with those men, and I had nothing but good things to tell you about those two men. But years later, I went to work, and there was a lady who came to me, and she said, I heard you went to Billy Chapel. And I said, yes, you know, I'm always proud of Billy Bibbage. Yes, it was a great church. And she said, well, did you know so-and-so? I was too young to know. Hi. Yes, so please don't tell me anything. <laughs> but she proceeded now to find a young teenage girl and to try to tell me one black thing she knew about each of those men. And even to this day, I, I push it back, but you can tell the devil still tries to remind me. Our talk, we need to be careful. Good reports and evil reports. We have to live through them all. You know that? As unknown and yet well known as dying and behold we live. As chastened and not killed. You ever feel like you've been whipped within an inch of your life? Now I've never felt that way physically. But I sure have felt that way tongue wise. I've had a few tongue licking. People can really talk as sorrowful and yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Paul said, all of these things can be troubles. Anything, there can be anything that comes to you that labors you and makes you heavy laden. Now, you already know that, don't you? And Paul made a great list of them here. He said, there's all kinds of things that are going to happen to you. And there's, there's things that are going to happen to you that are going to, going to work you. You're going to, you're going to be going along, and everything's going to be good, and something happens. <laughs> there's a problem. And, and that's going to come on you. And uh, the people <coughs> that you're around, there's going to be things happening. And those things, now it's not going to be a load. You know, you can say to me, Wilma, go get a load of firewood in the days when we brought in firewood. And I could go out with you, and especially if it was with one of my brothers, uh, he would say, now, Wilma, you just put your hands out, and I'll put the wood on you. Of course, he had to carry the other part. So when it got done, I had a load of wood. Now, that's one kind of problem. And you might fuss and quarrel, and you might... Um, trip or something, but you're going to live through care of the wood. But it's the burdens of life. There's burdens of life that can be laid on you. Nobody sees them. You're not, you don't, you don't see anything about them, but you're carrying a burden. And that burden can go all the way down to soul unrest. It can actually, the devil will try to trouble us until he troubles our soul. He'll actually try to trouble us to get us out of the church. He tries to trouble us to get us out of the Bible. He tries to trouble us to get out of good music. Um, sometimes I have found that you can just choose good music. And you can just play good music. And the devil that's standing there piling things on you about the third song, he'll leave. He'll go like, I don't want to hear any more of this. Don't tell me the answer is Jesus. Don't sing to me about amazing grace. Well, don't tell me. You know, he, he, he'll start leaving the room. And after he leaves, the burden kind of starts getting lighter. And then if you start thinking and praying and maybe think of a verse uh, and, and just start walking around the desk and start talking to the Lord and, and letting him know, well, I know you're Lord and I know this burden, but you said you were hearing me. You said you were right here in the room. You know what this burden is. You know what I'm carrying. You know that I'm tired. You know that my even my soul isn't resting good. And what another couple song? You'll be walking around singing uh, "Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound," or, or maybe you'll be humming uh, "Mansion Over the Hilltop" or whatever it is you sing. Or maybe you'll be going silent night, holy night. Uh, and then sometimes I'll go get Carol Robertson then and put him on and let him say, Christmas is believing. I can do it. Well, I can listen to him and do it. 
<laughs> and pretty soon, my heart died out. The Lord said, when you are laboring and you are heavy laden, come to me. Come to the word. Come to music. Come to me. Think and talk me. And, and, and when you come to me, understand, here's a little simple fact for you. And she sang it. Thank you. She said, just hang on. Just hang on. Let me tell you something that you already know that's one of the most important things anybody will ever tell you. You're on a journey to get home. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? Are you on a journey to get home? And say, answer, amen. amen. Are you on a journey to get home? Amen. Are you on a journey to get home? Amen. So then what if somebody did talk bad about you? Nyah, 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 nyah. So I had a burden. So it troubled my soul. So it bothered me. I took it to the Lord. I laid it down because I am on a journey. I can't stop here with all this nonsense. I'm heading home. I'm just going to hang on to Jesus and go on home. He heard me. He knows the problem. You see, nothing's ever going to cause you enough trouble for you to quit Jesus. We're on a journey to get home. Now, here comes the next part. I'm in the middle of this big trial. I'm in the middle of this big thing, and I can't make it go away. We've all had those. Gail's just been through one of those. Cancer. Oh, cancer's not something you can just, okay, I, I, I read my Bible, and I sang songs, and I feel better, so cancer's gone. No. That, that it wasn't the way it happened for her, was it? It was a long battle. So what you have to do while you're in that battle is you have to say, now get this church, this is important. Now is the time I'm worried about. Yeah. Today, today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Right now is the important time. Yeah. So sometimes they would shoot me an email. And we would go back and forth and, and we'd talk about the Lord. And what we did was got hope for the moment, didn't we? Hope for the moment. Uh, sometimes what you have to do is you have to stop and consider. I'm going to go through these problems in life. They're going to come. Do you know that if every one of you spoke good of me every day, do you know what the Bible says about me? Woe unto the person everybody speaks well of. I must be speaking out of both sides of my mouth if you're all like me. I had a sinner man tell me this week, you need to start doing podcasts. I said, I do? You do, because too many people are getting political on one side or the other, and you're just in the Bible. Amen. You need to be out there putting out more stuff just by Bible. That's pretty good. Now, that's pretty nice. But then what do you do when the person comes along and says, well, I really shame you put that thing on there. I'd have never done this. Well, I would never get on and say this, or I wouldn't... I wouldn't let people see me and when, when I wasn't doing it. You have to know all kinds of things are going to come and go. I don't care who you are, somebody's going to talk bad about you. I don't care who you are, there's going to be a day that your soul is going to be tossing and turning and trying to find a place of rest. Something has troubled your soul. There's going to be something happening in your family that you and another family member have had words about, or you have a difference in opinion about, and it's a burden. There's going to be a time in your life, unless you're somebody that I've never met, you're flat out going to mess up. You're going to say or do something that you wish you hadn't done. You're going to make a decision you wish you hadn't made. Are you going to sit down with it? You know what good's that going to do? The Bible says when you labor and you're heavy laden, when the things of life start piling in on, okay, the dishwasher's broke. The, the, the washer has already tore up the tile in the bathroom. So what are you going to do? Quit. 
So you're not going to ever wash dishes again, and you're just going to, every time you put clothes in your washer, you're just going to let it overflow the rest of the house? Not going to do any good, is it? You have to deal with the now and say, what can I do now? And it's now, today. You know what Jesus is saying to us? I'm here. I'm available. When things go bad, remember, you're on a journey. You want to get all the way home. Stop and know that I am hearing you now. Take some time for a little music. Take some time to go sit in the rocking chair and just rock. And if you have to hit the floor real hard with your feet and rock real hard for a while, after a little bit, it'll calm down. Y'all <laughs> been there, haven't I? And after a little while, your soul will catch a breath. And you can talk to Jesus and you can say, Jesus, this has been going on forever. And I don't know that these people are going to change. And he goes, nope, I don't know if they are either. But Lord, they're like loving a porcupine. I know, I've been loving them too. I've got quills up here and have a big stuff in me. Lord, what should I do? He says, stop and concentrate on the now. Remember that you're on a journey to get home. Today, what can I do to be a Christian? Amen. What can I do? I cheated yesterday. And Joy's already laughing because she knows how I cheated. <laughs> and she was not part of it, but she giggled over it. <laughs> it was funny. And if, I, if I'd have been a little quicker, I could have recorded it for you to let you watch it. <laughs> I got some of the rolls and I put them in the blessing box and a little while later some of the people on the street who ride bicycles <laughs> and my friend Hartley found the rolls <laughs> you could hear him out there Boy, he was having a time. He was opening that bag and he started to eat. Well, the next person that came found and could talk. And they were yelling, rolls, there's so many rolls over here. And the people were, were literally coming in and all but one of them opened their bag and started eating. And I thought, that was part of my name. What can I do today? What can I do today? You know, sometimes, sometimes I do something like this. I had a rough day the other day. I called. Sister Rinchin, is that you? Yes. Good, this Pastor Wilma. Yeah. How many kids is it you have? Nine boys. Five girls. Oh, but they're all Christians. Oh, that is wonderful, Sister Rinchin. That is wonderful. You always sound so happy. You are happy. Oh, what makes you so happy? Because I love the Lord. Well, that isn't that wonderful. You can talk to Sister Rinchin a little bit, and you're just giggling all over. I'm 90-something, she'll say. <laughs> you can pick up the phone, and you can dial the house, say, I was thinking about you today. I know you're taking care of somebody with Alzheimer's, aren't you? They're getting worse. Kind of like having a little kid that just doesn't realize. Mm -hmm. You know, I prayed for you today. You were on my mind. And Jesus said to pray for you. Yeah, well, you don't have to thank me because I just want you to know I love you and that I care about you. And I'm asking the Lord to bless you from the end of time. Well, you have a great day. Love you too. The now. The now. Today. You can go in the kitchen. And you can make the old mountain bread, you know, where you stir up a little bit of, yeah, meal and a little bit of flour and put an egg in it, put your little oil, do a few brown beans and uh, just a little bit of potatoes and maybe a little bit of kraut and fry up some of those cakes and holler out the door, hey, Roger, supper's ready. 
and he'll come in and say, Ooh, mm, boy, it smells good. You can do the now. You can do today. Because you're on a journey. All the things that are happening in this world, you can't do anything about. That's right. But you can do something about you, and you can do something now, today, for somebody else and for yourself. And you can pick up your own, you know, and the devil goes by and says, did you feel, feel that hit? I sure did, Satan. Did you feel that getting tossed into the bottomless pit someday and coming out and getting kicked into a, a lake of fire to stay forever? And I'll be on the shores of heaven with Jesus. Uh, I'll get out of here if I you, Satan. You're not doing anything more to me today. Jesus is here. I'm on the journey. The Lord said things are going to happen. And he said, it's about now. You can only do what you can do now, today. And keep your journey going. And then, you know what the last thing he says do? Leave the rest of it to me. <laughs> you really can't do anything about it anyhow. What you can do is what you can do now. Make a little more progress on your journey. Do what you can do now. And keep on heading home. Just keep on heading home. As we stand in this room. You just hold on. Now, I, I didn't even know that song, but it's a good one. When you keep on journeying on, you really can't, you really can't change what happens around you a lot. But you can change who you are by hooking up with Jesus. Hook up with Jesus. Anyone want to pray today? He's listening to you about your load right now.
How many of you would say, Pastor, I think you've reached where I've been living lately with an upraised hand? Amen. I thought so. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I understand that you have led this service from the very beginning. It was such a holy presence here with the honored veterans and talked about our country and our families and the kingdom and you. And then, Lord, the, the song about you and for us to keep on holding on. Then, Lord, I know that you have, have instructed us things are going to come in life. But all you need to do is concentrate on the fact that you can be with me and I can give you rest today, now. It's a journey, and you have to keep on journeying. But you're not responsible for the whole world. It's God that's responsible for the world. We're just responsible to do what we can do today. Thank you, Lord, for being in our service. Thank you for us feeling like we've been in your hands for everything that you've done. Lord, we know tonight we have guests coming to sing. We ask that you would move upon every heart that would be willing to come back and come back praying and ready to worship in that service as she is our guest tonight. We just ask that, that you would just bless us in the afternoon and give us time for the bodies to rest and some soul rest with just thinking on you. Bless us, Lord, we pray. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.